Okay then, let's get straight into this. Here are 101 interesting facts that you may or may not already know about Final Fantasy VIII. By the way, these bits of information aren't really presented in any particular order just so you know, so let's start with some facts about our reluctant hero, Squall Leonhardt. Squall was the first character that Tetsuya Nomura designed specifically for Final Fantasy VIII. Squall initially had longer hair and a somewhat more elegant appearance, but director Yoshinori Kitase felt that this design didn't work for the character, asking Nomura to shorten his hair and make him appear tougher instead. Some aspects of Nomura's first design can be seen in Squall's appearance in Kingdom Hearts though. The Squall is dead theory is a notorious fan theory, which suggested that Squall died during the events of the Delling City Parade, and that the rest of the game is in fact his dream. However, Yoshinori Kitase has denied that this theory is in any way accurate, saying, I think he was actually stabbed around the shoulder area, so he was not dead. But that is a very interesting idea, so if we ever do make a remake of Final Fantasy VIII, I might go along with that story in mind. As is well known, Squall is a word related to weather, defined as a sudden and intense storm. What's maybe less well known, is that the car that Squall uses to rush towards Cypher and Adea in Delling City, is named the Tempest. Going back to Squall's design, Tetsuya Nomura has said that he is actually somewhat based on River Phoenix's appearance, even giving Squall the same birth date of the 23rd of August. Nomura has also said that he doesn't actually remember why he gave Squall a scar across his face, stating that it was just a spur of the moment type of decision. Like Cloud Strife's distinguishable hair, he wanted something that would set Squall apart, and make him a more recognisable character. Given that the scar was present before establishing any of Squall's history, Nomura left it to scenario writer Nojima to decide how he ended up with it, which in turn led to the duel between Squall and Cypher in Final Fantasy VIII's opening. When Yoshinori Kitase was asked about what he would change about the game, if he could change one thing about Final Fantasy VIII, he mentioned the concert at Fisherman's Horizon where Rinoa mocks Squall by copying his mannerisms, and he in turn raises his hand at her, and she dodges. Yoshinori Kitase is quoted as saying, Even at the time, Nojima-san was like, He shouldn't be hitting her. It's really not good to have a guy hitting a girl. Looking back, I wish I could change that. There are a couple of optional scenes in Balam Garden that, if chosen, will result in Squall being penalised, and his seed rank being reduced. After completing the Fire Cavern mission at the start of the game, you can find two students sitting outside the second floor classroom, they will ask Squall if he can show them his gun blade, and, if he does, Instructor Aki will arrive to take points away from Squall's future seed rank. Additionally, after the encounter with Norg later on, another student on the second floor will request a display of magic power. Again, if Squall goes along with this, Instructor Aki will arrive to deduct a seed rank as punishment, so you might want to save before doing so. Nojima wanted to give players more of an insight into what Squall is thinking throughout Final Fantasy VIII, which is why we are able to see, so to speak, his thoughts displayed in transparent text boxes, as opposed to the standard text boxes. During the scene where Squall and Renoa are in the Ragnarok's cockpit, there was going to be additional dialogue that showed Renoa trying to dissolve any assumed jealousy on the part of Squall, for her having dated Cypher in the past. When Squall didn't catch on to what she's referring to, Renoa would have said that Squall does not care about other people's backgrounds or histories. While we can't usually interact with Squall as an NPC, because he is the main controllable character for the vast majority of Final Fantasy VIII, after Balam Garden becomes mobile, there is a brief opportunity to do so. During the short time when he is not in the party, which is during the scene where the other characters are choosing instruments that they'll play at the concert in Fisherman's Horizon, Squall can be found sleeping in his dorm room. The player can interact with him while controlling Irvine, but, sadly and perhaps as expected, won't get much of a response from him. Regardless of which Gunblade Squall has equipped, they all have the maximum 255% accuracy and can never miss in regular battle. As such, even when he is inflicted with the darkness status effect, it will only mean that he can't carry out critical hits on enemies while he is blinded. The same also goes for Cypher. While Squall is obviously well known for saying, whatever, numerous times throughout the game, this is quite a change from his original Japanese dialogue. In the Japanese version of Final Fantasy VIII, the phrase he uses often is waru katana, 
which seems to be closer in tone to saying my bad or excuse me, while whatever and my bad aren't perhaps all that different to one another in essence. While Squall is often seen as being rather cold and indifferent at times in the English version, as a result of saying whatever, he instead seems to be rather more sarcastic and cutting in the Japanese dialogue, where he uses excuse me as a kind of social obligation, rather than necessarily meaning it. Even though Squall's eyes are depicted as being light blue in Final Fantasy VIII and Dissidia, for some reason he is shown as having brown eyes in Itadaki Street Portable, a handheld board game that was released by Square Enix in 2006, and which was exclusive to Japan. Additionally, his Final Fantasy Mini Arts figure also has brown eyes. A reference to both Cloud Strife and Squall is made in Final Fantasy IX, when the line, No Cloud, No Squall, Shall Hinder Us, is used during the stage performance. In Parasite Eve 2, the protagonist Aya Bria can wield a gun blade that looks similar to Squall's revolver, while her single slash attack also resembles Squall's basic attack. Along similar lines, a costume based on Squall's outfit is available for Cliff Fitter, in Star Ocean, till the end of time. In the game's North American and European manuals, Squall's height was listed as 173cm, or roughly 5 feet 8 inches. However, the Japanese manual listed his height as 177cm, or about 5 feet 10 inches. Helpfully, the official websites for the original and Steam versions of Final Fantasy VIII list Squall's height as being 5 feet 9 inches, or 175 centimeters, just to add to the discrepancy. The official website for the remastered version doesn't list heights. The first time Squall was voiced was in Kingdom Hearts, aka as Leon. In the Japanese version of the game, he is voiced by Hideo Ishikawa, who also voiced Auron in Final Fantasy X and Kate Sith in Advent Children. In the English version of Kingdom Hearts, he is voiced by David Boreanaz, while in Kingdom Hearts 2 and Dissidia, he is voiced by Doug Erholtz. Of all the GFs in the game, when looking only at base level stats, Squall's highest level of compatibility is with Diablos, with a value of 660. If you look at Squall's base level stats at level 100, as in, what would his values be at level 100 with nothing else junctioned at all, he would have 4000, 187 HP, Strength of 47, Vitality of 41, Magic at 45, Spirit of 36, Speed at 37, and Luck at just 22. Next up, let's take a look at some interesting facts about Renoa. In the original demo that was released for Final Fantasy VIII, Renoa is actually part of the team that infiltrates Dolit and features in the cutscene where they are evacuating via the beach, in place of Selfie. Despite being included in the demo, however, she doesn't have a limit break or any lines of dialogue, but she is the only party member who is able to summon a GF, which is Leviathan. Obviously Renoa doesn't have a voice in Final Fantasy VIII, as none of the characters do, but it's interesting to consider the fact that she can be heard breathing during the FMVs where she is floating through space. Foley artists in the United States recorded and mixed the sounds that were featured in those scenes. If Renoa is part of the party that travels back to Balam Garden to warn about the incoming missiles, she appears in a cutscene on the garden's balcony. This scene always features as part of Squall's fractured memories at the end of Final Fantasy VIII, even if you didn't see it earlier on during the game. It's interesting to consider just how much Renoa is the complete opposite of Ultimissia. Renoa has white wings while Ultimissia's are black, while in contrast Renoa has black hair, as opposed to Ultimissia's silvery white hair. Renoa uses Angelo in battle, while Ultimissia uses Griva. Renoa in general is represented by more angelic-like motifs, while Ultimissia has devil-like horns. However, this juxtaposition between the two sorceresses probably played a big part in fueling the fan theory that Ultimissia is in fact Renoa from the future. When Yoshinori Kitase was asked about the possibility of it though, he said, No, that is not true. I don't think I'll incorporate that even if we do remake the game. But that being said, both Renoa and Ultimissia are witches, so in that sense they are similar, but they're not the same person. Of course, given the nature of fan theories, that's unlikely to put an end to the debate surrounding the possibility of Renoa becoming Ultimissia. When she isn't part of the party, Renoa can be found in the library of Balam Garden, though sadly she will not play cards. Also, if Zell is part of the active party while she isn't, 
she may comment as part of the library girl with a pigtail side quest. Perhaps it's not all that surprising that she can be found in the library though, considering that Nojima said he wanted Renoa to enjoy books and reading. Sticking with Nojima, he has also said that he laments the fact there was a great deal of focus on what the male staff thought was cute for Renoa, while female staff pointed out that there was no way that a girl wearing a miniskirt could move like that. Similarly, he has said that there should have been more female staff in the mix when it came to working on the romance parts of the story. During the final scenes of the first Dissidia game, a white feather falls towards Squall, which is surely a reference to the opening of Final Fantasy VIII and Renoa. Also, in Shade Impulse, while speaking to Ultimicia, Squall says that he made a promise to return to someone in his own world, again referring to Renoa. And again in Dissidia, three of Renoa's weapons, namely the Valkyrie, Cardinal and Shooting Star, are Ultimicia's exclusive weapons. In the battle where Renoa is junctioned to Adele in the Lunatic Pandora, it's actually possible to mug eight Mega Elixirs from Renoa, though of course if you choose to do this you have to be careful not to kill her in the process. Funnily enough, it's also possible to devour Renoa if you want to boost your HP by 10, but this is obviously pointless given that it kills her by doing so. But hey, I suppose if you really want that 10 HP boost, you can always try it. If you take Renoa with you during the part of the game where you liberate Balam Town from Galbadia, you'll see a scene in Zell's house where Renoa makes fun of Squall for being a little too cool. The name Renoa could be a variation on Riona, an Irish Gaelic name that means both pure and royal. This might also be alluded to by the way that the forest owls refer to her as Princess. As with Squall, there is also confusion about just how tall Renoa is supposed to be. When the game was released outside of Japan, Renoa's height was listed as 161 centimeters, or about 5 feet 3 inches. However, in the Final Fantasy VIII Ultimania, which was released 7 years after the game, her height is given as 163 centimeters, or 5 feet 4 inches. The reason for this is because the character heights were converted incorrectly from metric to imperial measurements for the North American version. Or maybe she was just wearing bigger shoes that day. Who knows? Renoa also appears in Itadaki Street Special, along with Squall, as well as featuring in the mobile version, of which the full name is Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy in Itadaki Street Mobile. Again, sadly they were never officially released outside of Japan and service for Itadaki Street Mobile ended in 2018. During the end credits of Kingdom Hearts 2, Leon is shown reading a letter from someone, which we can assume to be Renoa, given that her trademark Angel Wings motif appears from it. In Final Fantasy XV, there is a sign in Insomnia that says Renoa Ginko, which translates as Renoa Bank. Squall and Renoa featured in a technical demo for the PlayStation 2. In the video, which was designed to show off the console's graphical power compared to other consoles, they are shown dancing again, as they did in the ballroom in Balam Garden. Heading to the town exit before heading to the TV station in Timber triggers a scene in which Renoa defends the town's guards from G-soldiers. After you complete the events in the town, you can speak to the man on the railway bridge, who will give her a potion. This event can be repeated infinitely. Out of the six main playable characters, Renoa has the highest compatibility with nine of the 16 Guardian forces, if you take into account the base compatibility values. After all, this makes sense considering she is a sorceress. Out of all of the GFs though, again when looking only at base level stats, Renoa's highest level of compatibility is with Cerberus, with a value of 700. Furthermore, of the main characters, Renoa also has some of the highest base stats at level 100, surpassing all of the others in strength, spirit and, perhaps not too surprisingly, magic. If you look at her base level stats at level 100, again, if she had nothing else junctioned at all, Renoa would have 4,181 HP, a strength value of 67, vitality of 31, magic at 63, spirit of 39, speed at 36, and luck of 22. Okay then, let's go over some facts about Quistis that you may not have known about before. Quistis did not feature in the playable Final Fantasy VIII demo. As such, during the evacuation of Dolet cutscenes, a random Dolet soldier controls the gun turret that Quistis uses to bring down XATM-092 on the beach. When designing the characters, Tetsuya Nomura wanted at least one of the female characters to wear a skirt. 
Puistis was originally going to fulfil this role, but Nomura instead decided that a longer skirt worn over pants would look better, so the skirt wearing role was passed to Selfie instead. In Shiro Amano's manga adaptation of Legend of Mana, Quistis randomly has something of a recurring cameo as the main character's idol and fanboy obsession. Quistis is one of the few playable characters in the Final Fantasy series who wears glasses, with the other most notable ones being Teller from Final Fantasy IV, Ignis from Final Fantasy XV, and Queen from Final Fantasy Type-0. If you can think of any others though, please do comment below to let me know who I missed. Back to the height shenanigans. In the version released outside of Japan, Quistis' height was given as 168 centimeters, equivalent to 5 feet 6 inches. However, the Final Fantasy VIII Ultimania contradicted this again, instead giving it as 172 centimeters, or 5 feet 8 inches. If Quistis is part of the party when they visit Zell's room in the town of Balam, she will playfully embarrass him by recounting a humiliating story about him. Quistis also features in Itadaki Street Portable for the PSP, but not as a playable character. Rather, she provides assistance to the player in learning about the game through tutorials, offering helpful advice as an instructor, which makes sense given that she was one. Quistis also appears in the mobile version mentioned earlier, Itadaki Street Mobile, as she once again guides the player as their instructor. If Squall doesn't acquire the GFs from the study panel when prompted to do so at the start of the game, and then meets with Quistis at the front of Balam Garden without them, she will reprimand him and give him the GFs herself. Quistis's entry as part of Selfie's My Friends blog can be read on the study panel after liberating Balam Town from Galbadia. Back in Timber, the helpful chap on the bridge over the rail lines who gives out potions as if they're going out of fashion, will also do so if Quistis is in the party. However, if Renoa is also part of the party, she takes precedence. If you choose to take Quistis back to Balam Garden to warn them about the incoming missiles, along with either Zell or Irvine, she will eventually go into Squall's dormitory room, suggesting that the two of them have some tea and a chat. Doesn't that sound spiffing? Quistis is the oldest member of the orphanage gang, only beating Cypher by a few months. In Charlie's Angels, the movie released in the year 2000, in one scene, two boys can be seen playing Final Fantasy VIII. The curious thing about it is that whoever devised that scene clearly wanted them to be playing a two-player game, given that they are both using controllers during it. Squall and Quistis are seen fighting against two Grats. While Quistis is only equipped with the attack command, Squall does at least have a GF as he prepares to summon it. When considering only base level stats, Quistis's highest level of compatibility is shared between two GFs, as she has a compatibility value of 640 with both Shiva and Carbuncle. And when looking at Quistis's base level stats at level 100, if she had nothing else junctioned, she would have 3883 HP, a strength value of 46, vitality of 30, magic at 42, spirit of 34, speed also of 34, and luck of 21. Now let's go over some bits of information about Selfie. Selfie was the second character after Squall, that Nomura designed for Final Fantasy VIII. He intentionally decided to give her an impractical hairstyle. When he first designed Selfie, Nomura drew her in overalls, but realised that none of the other girls would be wearing a skirt, which is why he changed her look. If you take Selfie to help liberate Balam, during the scene in Zell's room, he becomes frustrated by the way she is behaving. However, taking his side and not taking hers will cause your seed rank to drop so it's not really worth it unless you want to see the comedic scene. After the town's liberated, if you talk to a chef at the harbour area with Selfie in your party, you'll see a scene where she reveals that her favourite food is Ms Moogle's cake. As soon as you have control over the floating Balam garden, you can head to the Shumi village. If you go there and undertake the stone searching side quest with Selfie as part of your party, she'll mention that it reminds her of playing in Matron's house even if you're doing this particular side quest before you've seen the Trabia Garden revelations, and the characters remembering their buried memories. Maybe she remembered all along and just didn't mention it. Selfie's ultimate weapon is the Strange Vision, which for some reason is the only weapon to have the maximum 255% hit accuracy outside of Gunblades. If you use Scan on Selfie during a battle, 
her character model can't be rotated in such a way as to view it from below, most likely because she is wearing a dress of course. At the beginning of the game, if you have Squall visit the quad before undertaking the Fire Cavern mission, he'll find Selfie there, who, in typical Selfie fashion, chases after him to persuade him to join the Garden Festival committee. Also, she'll recognise Squall if he did give her a tour of the garden after they bumped into each other earlier. If he joins the festival committee when she first asks him, Selfie's dialogue will change at the Seed graduation dance, as she tells him to work hard in the festival, besides doing well in Seed. If you choose to have Squall join the committee when she asks, at the end of the mission to destroy the missile base, Selfie bemoans the fact that she can't trust him to manage the festival by himself. Speaking of the missile base section of the game, if you attempt to enter it on foot without using the car, you'll be denied entry, and Selfie will shout up yours at the guards, which seems like a very Selfie thing to do. If Selfie is part of the party that goes up to the Lunar base, when she's reunited again after landing, she says that she managed to hitch a ride with a chocobo. This is despite the fact that chocobos can't normally be ridden on Estar. After Balam Garden has become mobile, it's possible to challenge Selfie to a game of cards. When she isn't in the active party, you can find her in the second floor classroom and play against her there. Sadly though, she doesn't play any rare cards, so it's more for the novelty of it than anything else. Selfie's Limit Break lets her cast magic from a random pool of spells, as well as giving you the opportunity to use four more powerful spells if you manage to stumble across them, which have no equivalent in normal magic that you can junction during FF8. These four exclusive spells that can be found as part of her Limit Break are the following. Full Cure, which, as you'd guess, restores everyone's HP and removes status ailments. Wall, which helpfully casts Protect and Shell on all party members. Rapture. Enemies are literally carried away by wings, which is quite a way to win a battle. And, of course, the end, which helps you to instantly beat enemies, including Omega Weapon, but not undead foes. However, the chance of the end showing up while using slot is dependent on what level Selfie is. There were also going to be two more spells available as part of slot, but they were never programmed into Final Fantasy VIII. These would have been Percent, a powerful gravity type spell that cuts all enemies HP by 93.75% of their current HP, and Catastrophe, the ultimate offensive spell 2.25 times more powerful than Ultima, and 1.5 times more powerful than Apocalypse. Now that would have been something to see. The GF, which Selfie has the greatest base level compatibility with, is Cerberus, with a rather high compatibility value of 740. When looking at Selfie's base level stats if she's at level 100, she would have a mere 3680 HP, a strength value of 45, vitality of 28, Magic of 49, Spirit at 38, Speed at 37, and a Luck value of 26. Perhaps that higher Luck value, in comparison to the other character's lower base level Luck stats, is reflective of the fact that her Limit Break is more Luck based. Okay then, next up is the ever excitable Zell. During Zell's energetic introduction scene, the seed symbol behind him is flipped for some reason. Zell was inspired by the kind of characters you would typically find in shonen manga, with his spiky hair and confident yet comedic personality being representative of this. While the Ragnarok is always piloted by Selfie, if she isn't part of the active party, if she is part of your team, you will instead see the aircraft being piloted by Zell. If both Zell and Selfie are in your party, it will be Quistis who takes over the piloting duties. However, Regardless of who is flying the Ragnarok, there are no other impacts on the gameplay itself. Zell is the only one of the six main playable characters who can't reach the maximum hit value of 255 via junctioning, and therefore can't guarantee perfect accuracy, as the best he can do is reach a maximum value of 253, with his ultimate weapon equipped, and 100 triple spells junctioned to hit. When he isn't included in your party, you can find Zell hanging around outside Balam Garden's library, which makes sense given the library girl side quest. If you want to, you can also challenge him to play some triple triad, but like Selfie, he doesn't have any unique or rare cards to win. Zell did feature in the Final Fantasy VIII demo, where the name of his limit break was Fight, 
instead of dual, and it also didn't require input from the player. Also, in the demo, it's sometimes possible to use his limit break even when he is not low on health, though the chance of this happening is small. Zell will also contribute to Selfie's My Friends block, which can be seen by using the study panel after the concert has taken place in Fisherman's Horizon. In Galbadia Garden, after Squall has stormed out of the reception room, you can find party members in different locations. Zell can be seen doing push-ups on the ground floor by the stairs, and also sneaking a peek at a girl who walks past. If Zell is part of the party when you reach the Deep Sea Research Center, he will offer up the information he has about what's there. You can use Zell to open the last door without expending any units if he is part of your party, but by doing so, you will run into many encounters on your way down to the ocean floor, which can't be avoided even if you have Encounter None active. Combat King is the magazine that reveals the inputs required for Zell's dual limit break. Funnily enough though, those hidden moves can actually be used before you've even got hold of issues of Combat King. If you input the correct button combination at the right time, you can use the abilities during his limit break, but they will not appear as an option on the screen, and instead remain hidden. Out of Squall, Irvine and Zell, Zell is the shortest of the three. His height was originally listed as being 165cm, or 5 feet 5 inches but has since been given as 168 centimeters, equivalent to 5 feet 6 inches tall. In Final Fantasy VIII's English translation, as we know, Zell is crazy for hot dogs. But again, this is different compared to the original Japanese version, where his favorite food is flavored bread or melon pan. After you return from the Siege of Dolet, but before you head back to the garden, if the old mechanic appears at the gas station in the town itself, Zell will help him fix a car. Later on, when you're heading to Timber on your next assignment. If you return to the station and talk to the attendant, you can see a scene where Zell boasts about his pull-ups record on the gas station sign. Zell's greatest base level compatibility is with Ifrit, with a compatibility value of 630. At level 100, with nothing junctioned and no stat boosts, Zell's base level stats would be the following. He'd have 4,018 HP, a strength value of 47, Vitality of 33, Magic of 42, his Spirit would be 27, Speed at 35, and a Luck value of just 20. And last up, for this video at least, is of course Irvine. Initially, Tetsuya Nomura wanted to give Irvine goggles as part of his look, but this idea wasn't carried through, and was instead replaced with his more cowboy-like appearance. Also, in his early designs, Irvine's hair was tied in a braid and his bangs were longer and straight. Irvine's post on Selfie's My Friends blog can be viewed after the boss battle in Fisherman's Horizon. Staying with Fisherman's Horizon, during the preparations for the concert and while briefly controlling Irvine, it's possible to leave the scene and roam around the town, as well as heading back to the garden. He can speak to the guy by the lift and explain why he follows the warmongering seeds, as well as paying a visit to Squall in his dorm room. He can also head to the library to speak to the library girl with a pigtail, and if Irvine visits the classroom, the Treepies there will ask him if he wants to join their club. If you've played enough games of Triple Triad to be able to begin the card club side quest while running around as Irvine, they will still refer to him as Squall, which is pretty damn hilarious. And speaking of Triple Triad, if you try to challenge him to a game while he isn't in your active party, he'll decline, saying that he only plays against girls. What a surprise that is! When you're at the basketball court in Trabia Garden, Irvine will take a shot at the hoop. Whether or not the basketball goes in though depends on the number of battles you've fought during the game. If it's less than 200 battles he'll miss, but if you've fought 200 or more, then he will be successful. If you take Irvine along to liberate Ballamtown, he will admire Zell's gun collection during the scene where they are allowed into his room. Exeter, Irvine's ultimate weapon, is the only ultimate weapon you can't get your hands on before reaching Disc 3. When he is not in the party, Irvine can be found hanging out in the second floor classroom watching Selfie, which isn't very surprising. Of all the GFs in Final Fantasy VIII when looking at base level stats, Irvine's highest level of compatibility is with Cerberus, with a value of 650. If you look at Irvine's base level stats at level 100, he would have 3,880 HP, Strength of 45, Vitality of 31, Magic at 42, Spirit of 28, Speed at 39, and Luck at 21. 
and last but not least, is something we already know, but which I find interesting anyway. Each of the three main playable female characters has a magic type limit break, as opposed to the three males, each of whom has a limit break that is predominantly a physical attack. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video, so please do let me know which facts you found most interesting in the comments below. Or do you have any interesting facts of your own about Final Fantasy VIII that you'd like to share? If so, then it would be great to read them too. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up, and subscribe as well if you aren't already. Finally, if you want to see more interesting videos about all things Final Fantasy, it would be amazing if you could support me on Patreon. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check it out. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.